Welcome to CITC 2337 lab 2.3 video using EFS and BitLocker. For this video, we'll be creating an encrypted folder, sharing the encrypted folder with the users, viewing certificate information, installing certificate authority, configuring a recovery agent, exporting and importing the certificate, and configuring BitLocker with a 5 gigabyte encrypted drive. So let's go ahead and begin with lab 2.3. And we'll be demonstrating how to use EFS, which is an encrypted file so system, and BitLocker. So let's go ahead and begin with that. The first thing we'll be doing on server DC is creating two accounts, B Smith and J Wayne for right now. So let's go ahead and navigate to our server manager. Then head over to tools and go to users and computers. Now, from here, we want to create two users so a new user and B Smith will be the first one. And then the password would be password. Finish. And just do that again real quick. Alright, so let's go ahead and create two global security groups. New group. First one would be marketing. Be global security. Okay. New group. And the second one would be movies. Global security. Okay. Now we want to add B Smith to the marketing group. So let's do B Smith, add to a group, and we want to do the marketing group. And we want to add Jay Wayne to the movies group. Oops. Huh. Okay, and let's create one more user named T Ball. Never expires. Next, create. And then for T Ball, we're gonna add him to the domain admin group. So let's do domain, check name, domain admins. Okay. Okay. So we have all the usernames and groups set up for server DC, and let's move on to the next part of this lab. For this next part, we are required to log in as B Smith onto our server A and we'll be configuring our encrypted file system for this part. What we want to do is navigate file explorer into the C drive and we're going to create a folder in this directory named encrypted data. And inside of encrypted data we're going to create two text files The 
first one we want to name Doc One. Well, because my number lock is off. And the second one, Doc Two. Inside of Doc One, let's put the text. This is Doc One. And save. And then for the second one, this is Doc Two. Okay, so let's go back one and go to properties of the folder we just made. And next thing we'll be doing is going to advanced. And we want to do compress any encrypt attributes. We want to do encrypted, but we can't do both. We can't compress any encrypted, it only has to be one. And then for this lab, we're going to be just doing the encrypted contents to secure data, and yes. And then just hit OK. Apply changes to this folder and subfolders and files. And that's exactly how we want it. Yes. And you notice that it turned green. This is because it's the default color for all encrypted files on the encrypted file system. You can turn off this color by going over into the appearance settings of your control panel. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. It's right here. Be just right here. The show encrypted or compressed NTF files in color. And we should only that checked for now. Now let's go ahead and open up our encrypted files that we just made and you notice that we're able to do it. The next thing we want to do is create another folder into our C directory. And let's name it uh, root files. And let's just move our document two to this directory that we just made. So let's open this in the new window. That's the encrypted data, and then drag it over. And the file did remain encrypted. So no matter what file it's in, since we encrypted the folder and the subfolders, the subfolders is this document it's encrypted so let's go ahead and uh, create a new folder inside of this folder or a new document inside of this folder name it document 3 or just doc 3 and the contents this is doc 3 okay you notice that this document 3 is not encrypted. It's because we because mood files is simply not an encrypted folder. And since the folder is not encrypted, the file is not encrypted. So let's move on to the next step. Let's go to the properties of both of the folders that we just made. Do security for both of them, and in here you'll see the permissions. And if you look for the permissions for the administrator and the domain user, let's see. Let's see users, let's see advanced. Full control, creator owner, full control, system full control, and then the uh, server administrator has full control. Let's see if you do edit permissions. P. Smith has none. 
and so forth. Okay. So that's the permissions for the mood files and encrypted data. Um, both administrator and the domain user has full control. Based on the permissions, you would think that they they are able to open up our encrypted data as they do have full control, which pretty much means they can read, write, execute anything on this computer. So let's go ahead and log off of this and log on to T-Ball and let's see if I'm able to do my full control on my administrative account I made. Okay, so let's go into our encrypted data and let's see if I can open up document one. Oh, okay. Access is denied, so I'm not able to open it. That's because only the owner of the file, that only the owner of the encrypted file can open it. Unless the administrator has permissions through being the recovery agent they're not able to open it through EFS so simply only the owner can open the file regardless of what permissions the administrator in the system has full control or not so let's go log on to JWayne okay let's go and log in as JWayne and let's let's see if what we can do with the encrypted data folder and just to remind you this account is our domain user and the last one t-ball was a administrative account that we made so let's see oh access is denied so the, neither the admin or the domain user can open it up now let's create a subfolder within this folder and let's name it J Wayne folder. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we have the subfolder we made and now let's create a text file within this subfolder and name it J Wayne. Okay. So let's log off onto our Bill Smith account and let's see if Bill Smith can open up the J Wayne text file that we just made nope access is denied and not sure <laughs> what that was. Um, strange. Okay. And let's move on to the next step. We'll be moving document one to the J Wayne folder. So just go back one and drag it in there. And let's see. And details. See, so user B Smith is still the only person that can access this file. The original creator of document one. And I'm on B Smith. Okay. So let's go ahead and log off of this onto our T Ball account. And let's go back to our C directory into a encrypted file and let's actually just delete this entire directory. Oops. 
and as you notice I'm able to delete it the administrative account can delete the file but they cannot open it uh, encrypted file system prevents administrators unless they're the directory recovery agent from reading encrypted files but they don't stop them from deleting them so simply put only the account that originally created the files can read them and any other users cannot and let's move on to the next step which will be doing is sharing the encrypted document one file with Jay Wayne and I'm guessing that requires us to undo the deletion so let's restore it properties advance details and let's do permissions Let's just do properties, advanced sharing. No, oh, share. Let's find John Wayne. And share. And then share it from the T ball account. Okay. Now let's log on as B Smith real quick. Alright, so I'm logged in on this B Smith and we want to go to X File Explorer and to our encrypted data. And we just want to share this document with John Wayne. So add John Wayne. And actually, since we're here, we're going to be going to the view certificate. And then you can see the certificate for the user and details you can see more information about it let's see so for here we can see that the certificate is valid to August 26 2106 that's uh, pretty much a hundred years it ain't gonna expire within our lifetime and the next thing you can see is a typer certificate you can see it's a V3 SHA-1 and you can see that the uh, bits encrypted the bits that I encrypted are 2048 which is pretty secure definitely take a really, really long time without a supercomputer to crack that the type of key that this used is a symmetric key because EFS uses symmetric key to encrypt folders and subfolders but it uses a asymmetric key to store that symmetric key so it's a pretty secure method of encryption and it's pretty hard for anyone to break so let's go ahead and close out this certificate um, hmm. let's actually Add John Wayne. Like I was originally going to do. Okay. So okay, okay, apply. Um actually you can see the recovery certificate right here. And this is so if you ever don't have access to your account that made the file you can just go there and rec recover it so administrator at 2050 or class 2050 is the recovery agent assigned so let's click OK and let's log on to Jay Smith real quick or <laughs> Jay Wayne alright so Jay Wayne Password. <sighs> okay. 
Let's see if Jay Wayne can modify that text document. Since I shared it, should be able to, right? Yep. So let's do something. Let's save it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jay Wayne is able to modify and save a document because we added them to the user access for that file just earlier, a second ago. And let's move on to the next step. We'll be uh, installing certificate authority and configuring FS recovery agent. So for this next step, we're just going to configure Active Directory certificate services. So let's we'll select the ADCS in the left pane over here, which is already selected for me. At the top of the window in the server manager ADCS bar, let's click the orange triangle. And in the post deployment configuration box, let's click next and certificate authority. Let's do this thing real quick. And then it's just want to click next, next. Just want to click continue next all until the end of the until you get to the end of the final page. Configure. Let's see. Okay. And close. Do you want to configure additional role services? So you just want to click no. Alright, and then the next thing we want to do is configure our recovery agent. So let's open up our group policy management. And then you just want to create a new GPO. So let's do that real quick. Create a GPO in this domain. And this is going to be named Recovery Agent. Okay. Let's see. It must exist from earlier. Let's just. Find out where it is. All right, <laughs> let's try this again. Recovery agent. Okay. You selected a link. All right. Let's click on that. Okay. So you want to right click and edit recovery agent policy. So let's just do that, edit. And we just want to go to policies and computer configuration. <sighs> Window settings, security settings if it load. And then public key policies. Then in here, we just want to right click encrypting file system and select create data recovery agent. do something okay so I went ahead and went through loaded and here we have the data recovery agent this is as far as we can go for right now because we haven't worked with certificate authority yet um, to continue this we need to 
Okay, so for this next part, we'll be exporting and importing certificates on server A, and we already logged on as John Wayne, and we'll be using Certificate Manager servers. So let's go ahead and open that up. Cert Manager. Dot. Ms. Ah, Msc. Okay, and let's just export a certificate for John Wayne. Um, let's see. So we have three right here. Let's um include the private key. If I can find it, which one is it? I guess all three. Export. We'll export all three. Yes, export the private key next, personal next, don't know what half of this stuff does. Okay, so let's... Uh, uh, I guess you have to. Type in this password. Next, file name, specify the name of the file you want to export. So let's... Don't really know, just put export, I guess. And let's actually delete these. Access is denied for one of them. Okay. And so let's move on to the next step. We'll be logging off and on as John Wayne. Okay, so for this next step, we logged in as John Wayne again, and we're going to see if we can access our John Wayne text. And access is not. Let's just input the John Wayne certificate real quick, which is located in our user's John Wayne folder. And let's do current user next, John Wayne next. Finish. Okay. And let's just log off and back on to John Wayne. And let's see if we can access the John Wayne document now. Hopefully we can. And we can. Okay. Let's move on to the next part of this video. Okay, so for this next part, we'll be using BitLocker. So the first thing we want to do is add a drive. And we went ahead and already did that. So just a 5 gigabyte drive would be perfect. The um, reason we're adding this drive is because BitLocker can only be used on non-bootable drivers. So once we have that done, let's go ahead and install the BitLocker drive encryption feature. So let's do add rules and features next. And select BitLocker drive encryption next, install. And let's just restart it as needed. Alright, so we just restarted the machine. Now, what I already did is added a 5 gigabyte hard drive, so I'm able to encrypt the new hard drive and use a password for it. So I already set it up the simple volume. Let's right click and turn on BitLocker for this drive. So you want to use a password to unlock the device, and let's just assign this a password. I'm going to hit X, and how do you want to back up your recovery key? Let's do save to a file, and let's just save it to the desktop, that'd be fine. It's good, I think to have more than one recovering key. Do you want to save the recovery key on this PC? Yes. Uh, click next, encrypt use space only, encrypt the entire drive. And for this, we'll just do the entire drive <coughs> and start encrypting. Now we're just going to let it run its course real quick. 
and it's finished. Next thing we'll be doing is showing that the drive is encrypted. Other than this locking icon, let's go over to the control panel and let's do BitLock Drive Encryption. And you can see right below that new volume E BitLocker is on. And you can see that it is encrypted. Next thing we'll be doing is showing that there is no TPM present. And if we simply click the TPM administration, you'll see that compatible TPM cannot be found. It cannot be found on this computer. And another way we can do it is simply opening the run and going to tpm.microsoft service. And it will show it that way too. In conclusion of this video, we created an encrypted folder, we shared the encrypted folder with the users, we viewed the certificate information, we installed certificate authority, we configured a recovery agent, exported and imported a certificate, and we configured BitLocker, and we encrypted a 5GB hard drive without TPM.